Well, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, I should say. And uh, before we get going, I just wanted to see if uh, I'm being heard right now and uh, there's no problems with audio. So if you could, I believe there's a virtual hand you could raise um, at the bottom of your screen, if uh, a few of you could do that to make sure I, I'm being heard. Okay, um, I assume that we're, I'm being heard and I shall proceed. So first of all, uh, my name is Steve Murphy. I'll be the facilitator for today's webinar. And uh, I am currently the chair of the Right Away Management Conference. Um, and uh, so first of all, I'd like to welcome all webinar delegates and like to make a couple of announcements. Uh, first, the Ontario Public Works Association Right Away Management or Right Away Management Committee is pleased to announce that going forward, it will be linking arms with the American Society of Civil Engineers Utility Engineering and Survey Institute, also known as UESI, the, their Ontario chapter to co-host the annual Right Away Management Conference. In addition, the OPWA Right Away Management Committee and UESI Ontario Chapter jointly would like to announce that starting in 2020 and going forward, October will be Right Away Management Month. The intent of Right Away Management Month is to promote and to bring greater awareness through education to the ma many challenging issues associated with the management of the public right away. For October 2020, free webinar, educational webinars on right-of-way management and associated topics will be offered every Tuesday and Thursday. If you have not had a chance to check out all the webinars available, please visit rowmanagement, all one word, .ca. Registration for future webinars is still open. Prior to starting today's webinar, I would like to go over a couple of housekeeping items. First, all delegates will be muted throughout the webinar to eliminate any background noises that could interrupt our presenters. Secondly, a Q&A will occur at the end of the pres presentation if time permits. Please use the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen to forward any questions for the presenters. And finally, this webinar is eligible for the OSET Continuing Professional Development Program as a partial one hour fulfillment of the full day informal course slash self-directed study, a proof of registration and a short summary of what you learnt need to be submitted to OSET or the webinar to qualify towards your CPD. So let's get going. So today's webinar is, what is right away management anyway? Uh, today's we have two presenters today. Uh, first, we have they are sorry Tracy Anastasio from the city of Markham and Barry Mulcahy from the region of Peel. Tracy is currently a member of the OPWA uh, Directors Board as the Right Away Management Committee's liaison. She has over 20 years' experience dealing with the utilities and right away management from both the municipal and private sector. Tracy is currently the City of Markham's Utility Coordinator and is responsible for the Utility Coordination of Municipal Consent Permits at the City. She has active, actively been involved with the Right of Way Management Conference from its inception. Barry is the Chair of the OPWA Right of Way Management Committee. He has worked as a Project Manager for the Roads Design and Construction Section in the Transportation Division at the Region Appeal since 2006. His recent focus area has been working on a number of road widenings and intersection improvement projects. Prior to working at the Region of Peel, Barry was a project manager at the City of Hamilton. Now, if you're interested in more information on Tracy and Barry's careers, please go to the webinar re registration section at rightawaymanagement.ca. Tracy, Barry, 
The virtual stage is yours. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Barry, you're up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hi, everyone. It's Barry here. So I guess the first thing we're going to look at is what's in the right of way and what types of things we encounter. Um, and if you see from the uh, picture there, you have uh, things like um, sidewalks, curbs, road, obviously, um, bike paths, trees, street lighting, benches, planters, bike, bike paths, that type of thing. Tracy? Uh, they would be typically municipal assets. Um, you also have uh, utilities and private assets like hydro, um, cable, gas, etc. cetera. Um, they would also um, <clears throat> be in the right of way and have to be considered and accommodated as well. And who are we talking about when we talk about using the right of way? Um, lots and lots of telecommunications companies. Uh, in Mark and Tracy tells me there's uh, up to eight. Uh, hydro, gas, geothermal, transit. There's also private encroachments such as gardens, sprinkler systems, heated driveways, and lots more. Um, then you have uh, other considerations like um, wide loads um, and uh, parades and in recent times um, we have uh, we have to accommodate road races as well so these would be uh, uh, just a quick cross-section of the types of people and stakeholders that would use the the right-of-way um, and of course the, the general public as well So why manage? Why manage the right away? A lot of the uh, right away is used by multiple stakeholders. And if we don't manage it, we're going to have um, some issues in the future and issues in the present. Uh, we need to reduce uh, the road cuts and sidewalk cuts to um, our current infrastructure to manage the life of that infrastructure. If we don't manage those, then uh, the infrastructure that's in the right of ways, whether it's municipal or other, will uh, have a reduced life cycle and then we'll have problems uh, in the future. So damage prevention of existing infrastructure, and you don't want someone hitting gas, you don't want somebody hitting hydro. Um, I mean, we wanna reduce as much uh, damage to existing infrastructure as possible. Uh, so that people aren't spending money to go in and, and uh, fix all those damages. Um, avoiding multiple users at the same um, section of the roadway. Uh, one of the last things we want to do in any municipality is close down a road inadvertently um, because there's uh, someone doing work on one side of the road and someone doing work on another side of the road and a Santa Claus parade is supposed to be going down that road. Um, so we need to make sure we're managing those users of the right away, making sure that there's not multiple people in one spot um, doing work or, or activities in those right aways um, or having impacts on the road uh, right aways. We also need to minimize the traffic congestion and impacts. Um, we don't want um, roads to be blocked during um, peak traffic times. We don't want to have, again, multiple people doing work in the same spot and having impacts on those. Uh, we did mention a little bit about the increased lifespan of the right away asset. If we control some of the things that are happening, then we can make sure that the lifespan of the assets are maximized um, and uh, reduce everybody's um, budgets and, and whatnot for uh, replacements. Again, uh, we need to allow for future utilization of, for above and below um, ground in the right of way. 
if we uh, manage where things are placed and how they are placed, then other uh, people and uh, things can be done in the future. If we don't manage that, then uh, we won't be able to place uh, per se other infrastructure underground because uh, someone's already taken up um, some infrastructure uh, space in the underground, uh, not thinking about how to best utilize that space. And same thing goes with above ground. Um, if you have uh, someone who doesn't think about the best utilization of the space and uh, potentially impact uh, other possibilities um, when they're doing a, an install um, that could happen in the future. Uh, so some ways that we can manage uh, these right of ways, the right of ways and um, the stuff that's going in them and what's happening and occurring in them. Um, we can establish permits, uh, locations and inspections and uh, payment restoration controls. So with the permits, you can uh, kind of keep an eye and track who's working where, who's doing activities where, and be able to manage that, that um, uh, conflicts with the different uh, items and, and uh, people. Um, and the locations, uh, managing your locations, um, you know, uh, if gas is 0.6 off of a property line and someone's asking to go um, 1.5 from gas, perhaps maybe that's not the best idea and you're gonna shift them back closer to gas so that someone else could go uh, use that extra 0.5 to place in the future. Um, inspections, uh, just checking and making sure that everybody is uh, installing or doing what they're saying they're gonna do. Whether it be a parade going down a road, they say they're going to go down one road and then they change and go down a different road, or whether it be a utility installation that says they're going to go in at a specific offset. Um, so having a checkup on what's going on and controlling it a little bit. Uh, pavement restoration controls, um, managing what's happening with the pavement and how it's being restored uh, will help uh, prolong the life cycle of the roads. Um, if the pavement is not restored correctly, uh, it could uh, shorten that life cycle. Another way to manage is implementing agreements and standards and common protocols. So if the people working within your right of ways become knowledgeable and they are used to working with you, um, they will follow the standards or know the standards and should become used to your, your common protocols. If you don't have any and they can't follow it, then they'll follow whatever they can come up with or know of. And you could end up with a variety of different standards and protocols that perhaps work for you or perhaps don't. Um, so having something in place is better than having nothing. And then having some agreements in place uh, with uh, regular users um, so that they are you have something that they're following and know. Uh, one example of the agreements would be municipal access agreements. Encourage scheduling and coordination mechanisms for all right-of-way users. Um, so we, we work on, um, in the city of Markham, uh, coordinating with different uh, utilities and city projects, region projects, um, so that uh, we don't have multiple users in one right-of-way and or those projects allow the other user a time frame to come in. Um, so that uh, we're able to manage everybody in the right of way and everybody can get their stuff done. Um, obtain and maintain accurate information for loading, locating facilities in the right of way. Um, having locates is an important um, task. Nobody wants to hit anybody else when they're doing any digging. And knowing what is in our right of ways um, is important uh, so that uh, we're able to uh, manage it and have a, a good ta uh, handle on what uh, is going on. Um, so we do have in the city um, some ways to do that. Uh, we do have all permits that are tracked in Amanda um, and we have 
the city assets uh, tracked in GIS. Um, record and hold responsible parties accountable for work and restoration of the railways. So again, um, knowing who's there, having a way to track who's there, um, we do do we do that through the Amanda process, having permits go through Amanda, both for um, special events, ROPs, and municipal consents. Um, and uh, we're able to then go back to those people that have had activities or done if, done construction in the right of ways uh, to get them to um, finish up their restoration um, and look after anything that may be defective from what they did do. Uh, so that's how we manage the right of way in the city of Markham. And I know that there are a lot of people that do very similar um, in the right of ways. Some other things that have been done, uh, we review uh, the reviews to optimize right away usage. So I touched on this a bit before. Um, yeah, we try to manage where things are being placed so that other people can go in the future. Um, we try to avoid people spreading their stuff out. We try to keep them as close to the, the next uh, item as possible. So I did mention the gas uh, example uh, previously. Um, we also look at above ground as well for um, installation and proximities to stuff. So example is your driveways and, and uh, curb edges. Uh, we'll look at where uh, above ground infrastructure is going so that you're not impacting those uh, types of things along with daylight triangles and stuff. Uh, we set standards for reviews for public safety and traffic impacts. Um, the standards uh, that we set uh, are in our engineering standards often, and we're working on a guideline as well right now um, for after the fact installations. Uh, the standards, um, we will uh, look at specific things during reviews to uh, make sure that uh, we're managing that right away so that everybody can use it and uh, the um, residents aren't uh, put into an adverse condition with the, whatever use is being happening. Permitting to coordinate multiple activities. Uh, in our permits, when we do permit, um, we coordinate the activities and many of our permits will have notes. Uh, if there are other people in the areas, we will make those notes on the permits. Um, and we'll coordinate with uh, the other people or ask that the people who have the permit we're giving to uh, ensure they coordinate. Um, again, uh, we don't want to become a constructor as a municipality, so we don't want anybody in the same area at the same time doing any work. Um, and uh, we make that quite clear uh, to avoid um, that possibility. Uh, we do have the agreements with the different uh, regular users of our right-of-ways. Um, so we, there are municipal access agreements. Uh, developers have subdivision agreements that cover off how they're supposed to be using and doing stuff within the development that's gonna impact the right-of-way. And then we have franchise agreements with uh, the, a couple of the other utilities. Well, uh, another way that we manage the right-of-way is by having public utility coordination meetings with uh, many of the utilities that uh, use the right away. Um, we discuss items in that meeting, uh, things that may affect everybody um, and some of the standards or any of changes that are going on. We pass on information for projects that uh, the city is going to be doing um, as well as some of our maps and uh, um, updates for those. Digital system mapping, um, this is another way we uh, manage our right-of-way. We do coordinate with our digital systems uh, and mapping. We have a GIS system in place um, that we do put all of our, uh, a lot of the works and uh, activities that are going on in the right-of-way so that we can look when we are looking at any further um, right-of-way activities and works uh, to see if they're going to conflict. Um, or if you've actually had uh, multiple applications from one person. 
So we do do that and uh, we have an Amanda system that tracks all of our applications for municipal consent and ROP uh, that are going on within the right away. So those are some of the things that we do to manage the right away. There's a, a whole gamut more uh, that are there. There's going to be some traffic uh, management uh, that is done through our traffic operations. Um, and uh, then we have, of course, our operations department that manages all of our, um, uh, the right away uh, snow uh, clearing and grass cutting and signage and stuff like that. So uh, to put a little bit of context and a bit of history uh, around the uh, the right of way management, uh, how it kind of came about, um, it's essentially currently consisting of uh, a number of stakeholders, mainly drawn from municipalities, uh, utilities, consultants, developers, and uh, we'd like to have some contractors on board as well. Um, and from what Tracy was saying there, I guess you, you get the idea that there's a, an awful lot going on and, and hence the objective to, to uh, create a forum for uh, better cooperation, et cetera, and planning uh, going forward. Um, so a little bit of history about the, um, the, how, how it came about. Um, in, in 2010, um, the, OPWA hosted a technical workshop on right-of-way management and a working group was formed, um, Utilities Coordination Best Practices Working Group um, was formed to develop best practices. Um, yeah, this was involved uh, with the development of TAC guideline for coordination of utility relocations. And in December 2016, the OPWA approved the right-of-way management committee and added to its governance. And um, so uh, it, the, 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 um, the technical workshop um, uh, was hosted in 2010 um, at a time when infrastructure money was being granted by the province uh, and everyone was scrambling, I guess, to meet tight deadlines. Following that workshop, a working group was formed to develop best practices. Um, Steve, who you met uh, earlier on, who's a facilitator today, um, led the working group and uh, this linked arms with folks in, in tax public utilities management subcommittee that were involved in a national initiative to develop a guideline for utility coordination uh, on road projects. This evolved into tax guideline for the coordination of utility relocations. Uh, throughout 2016, Steve and others worked uh, with the OPWA to create uh, a new OPWA committee that would focus um, specifically on right-of-way management issues. And in December 2016, the OPWA approved the terms of reference for the right-of-way management committee um, and added this committee to its governance. Uh, Steve um, uh, and Lawrence are planned uh, from uh, T2 utility engineers uh, were co-chairs co um, at, at the beginning. Tracy, we moving forward. So I guess um, our mission statement and what we're trying to do uh, is best um, summed up here, to develop relationships, knowledge and best practices that will educate users and stakeholders on the efficient use uh, and management of public rights of way. So to better coordinate all that lovely stuff that uh, Tracy was uh, talking about earlier, and I guess more besides, that's, that's, uh, that's the fundamental uh, objective of the, um, of the committee. Tracy? So the right away management uh, committee um, uh, had some goals. We've developed documentation and forums to raise awareness of right of way management or right of way management um, and promote the best practices um, and the best use of the right of way. 
so we do share stuff like we are today um, to develop and uh, work together as uh, within the industry with everybody um, so that everybody can grow and uh, develop and, and um, the right of ways can be managed uh, well. Uh, engage stakeholders from all industries and sectors in discussion on common issues. Um, again, much similar to top one, we're working uh, and uh, talking uh, with everybody so we can come up with uh, common solutions and things that work for everyone. And uh, we're strengthening existing and promoting new relationships within the right-of-way stakeholders. Um, so through this a forum, the right-of-way management uh, conference, uh, I'm sure that those have, that have participated have had a chance to gain some more knowledge and uh, make some contacts that they're able to then go back to and, and uh, bounce stuff off of later on. Uh, we also look at uh, getting the redwaymanagement.ca uh, website up uh, and running and uh, have it and the committee as a go-to for right-of-way management issues and answers. Um, we've become a certified deliverer of professional development courses for the OSET and PAO. And uh, we are aiming to create a national public right-of-way management committee um, uh, within 10 years. Uh, Barry, over to you. Barry, you're on mute. The composition at the moment, sorry, um, is uh, we have six municipal members currently, uh, York Region, City of Mississauga, City of Markham, Peel Region, uh, Durham Region, and Simcoe County. And uh, utility members are Enbridge Gas, Electro Utilities, Hydro One, Rogers Cable, and Bell Canada. Um, we also have some consultants too. Tracy? Uh, one second, Barry, sorry. Um, you, might, you might notice there that um, the municipalities are, um, are very um, GTA centric, if you like. Um, our objective is to to encourage more um, more involvement uh, uh, throughout Ontario, um, and hopefully some of you are uh, are listening in. That that'll be great. Um, at consultant associations, we have four uh, currently: T uh, two Utility Engineers, SCS Consulting, Canadian Sign Association, and ACOM. And we also have two uh, government agencies, um, MTO and Metrolinx. So you've met Tracy. Uh, she's the uh, OPA, OPWA Director Liaison uh, for the Right Away Management Committee currently. Uh, myself, I'm the Chair of the uh, Right Away Management Committee. Steve, who you've met earlier, um, uh, he's the facilitator today. Uh, he's currently the vice chair uh, of the right -of Management Committee. Uh, Mark Kavanagh um, from uh, T2 Utilities. Uh, he's um, currently our secretary. And we have five uh, right away management subcommittees that specialize in, in, in specific areas um, pertaining to the uh, to the right away. Um, as a lot of you may know and may have attended, we've been running a, a right away management uh, conference uh, since 2015. Um, Steve is the current chair of that committee that uh, that organizes the conference. Um, and obviously, at the moment, we're we're going to a virtual um, type conference, if you like, with these webinars. Uh, the PUCC Coordination Committee. Um, that's the the chair of that is uh, is Javito Marchese uh, from the city of Mississauga, and uh, that's essentially. Um, 
intended to to coordinate with with uh, the different uh, municipalities and how they go about their PUCC um, and to to uh, attempt to to get better pr practices and best practices in place um, uh, going forward. Is that you, Tracy? You want to come in? Uh, we have a permit subcommittee. Um, currently, there is uh, no chair. This uh, committee is uh, not uh, as advanced as the other committees, uh, and we're looking for a permit subcommittee chair. Um, and uh, they, uh, the idea of the permit subcommittee is to review and provide uh, um, comments and best practices on permits. Uh, we have a data intelligence and information sharing subcommittee. Uh, they're looking at um, how this uh, um, can be shared and uh, investigate and disseminate industrial practices and data intelligence, creating guidelines and best practices for data intelligence, um, and uh, prep fail mystery from um, Richmond Hill is uh, the co-chair on this along with Chris Gill from um, Bell Canada. Environmental subcommittee, uh, Jeff Johnston um, from SCS Consulting um, is uh, the co-chair for this. And they're looking at investigating per proposed best practices for environmental issues within public right away for Ontario increase awareness of climate change and species at risk, and create guidelines and best practices for habitat and vegetation restoration, identify effect, effects of different recreational uses within the right of ways. Um, what have we accomplished so far? Uh, we've established an annual right away conference that is based in its sixth year with 200 plus participants this year on the virtual um, presentations that we are doing. Uh, we've established five subcommittees that we just went through. We've collaborated with Transportation Association of Canada's uh, Public Utility Management Subcommittee and prepared the guidelines for the coordination of utility relocations. So those are available um, online. If nobody, if you haven't got them yet, they're a good reference. Uh, we've developed partnership with the Utility Engineer and Survey Institute. Um, they are partnering with uh, OPWA uh, on the right away management uh, conference and on a few other items uh, so that we can develop and create more stuff for everybody for the right away. Uh, we're diversified from the in-person conference uh, last year to this uh, year's webinar format. And we've obtained approval for continuing professional development hours um, for participants. So I think we've done a fair bit so far. Uh, Barry, back to you. So amid the, uh, the chaos, uh, as Tracy just mentioned, um, uh, one of the things we've done is, is transferred um, to the webinar series and um, we'll be telling you a little bit about some of the upcoming seminars. Uh, this is, I guess, is an introductory one. And we've also um, uh, declared, if you like, um, October as Right Away Management Month, uh, in which, in which uh, we will be doing uh, these uh, seminars and trying to get a focus on, uh, on right away management and, and better practices, etc. cetera. Um, And the webinar series, um, you'll find a lot of the information on the uh, website, and I'm sure some of you have uh, signed up for other uh, other webinars as well in this series, but just to, to go through them quickly and hopefully what your appetite if you haven't. Um, today's one is obviously the current one, which uh, is uh, right away management. What is right away management anyway? On October 6th, um, Working on the right of way where pipelines are present. That would be looking at the most effective and safest way to work within our mirror pipeline uh, in the right of way. How and who to contact, crossing agreements, locates, setbacks, 
uh, pre-work planning. So if your work encounters um, any of those things, um, you might be interested to tune into that one on uh, uh, next Tuesday, October 6th. Um, then on, two, on Thursday, um, October 8th, um, we're going to be running, um, as we said, every Tuesday and Thursday in October. So on October 8th, it's a digital twin and GIS. And digital twin refers to a digital virtual model of potential and actual physical assets, processes, people, places, systems, and devices that can be used for various purposes. I uh, invite you to explore how municipalities and utilities can build their digital twin and utilize their existing GIS as the foundation. That one should be interesting, I'm sure. Okay, on October 13th, we have multi-channel GPR, um, applications for your project. This webinar will present several MC GPR study cases showing unprecedented high resolution images of shallow surfaces, um, utilities, tree roots, and abandoned railroad tracks. So that's gonna be an interesting one. Um, I'm gonna take part in that myself uh, because I know that uh, uh, we're always looking at those type of things within the right away and um, having uh, having issues with them. On October 15th, digging into late locate solutions. Uh, late locate, locates, um, we all deal with them. They cause uh, cause some headaches when we go to do our, our um, projects. Um, so the, there's gonna be a presentation on that and how we can um, create some solutions to these problems. So, uh, Ontario One Call, I believe, is doing this presentation, and um, they're always really good with the presentations and uh, relaying information to us and to you. Um, then October 20th, you're gonna have cross bore safety. Uh, this is gonna look at um, cross bores, um, how they're created and what Enbridge is doing to work collaboratively with you um, stakeholders to um, avoid them and to raise public awareness. Um, Barry, do you want to do October 22nd? October 22nd is a mobile LiDAR. Uh, providing efficiency in survey data capture. Uh, loaded technology has been used to generate dense, richly detailed data sets from which it has become increasingly easy to extract salient features and generate 3D models. Right away in topographic mapping and asset management are just a few of the applications to which it can be applied. This presentation will explore the various aspects of LiDAR technology and examine some of the use cases. Uh, this would be an interesting one too, I think, for because uh, this is a this is an evolving uh, technology. And then on October twenty seventh, uh, we have five G in small cell. Currently, the United States is further along in the deployment of five G small cell infrastructure than most of Canada. Uh, this webinar will discuss the right of way management challenges faced by two cities in Kansas, as well as speak to the national and state legislation's decisions on 5G small cell deployment. And uh, from what I hear, this is something that's going to become a lot more um, uh, more prevalent uh, and uh, on our right of ways uh, going forward. So uh, it's, it's a good one to, to get uh, some intel on and some information on. Um, and the final one, um, October 29th, Tracy, did you want to? <laughs> Speak to that uh, one, thank you. <laughs> sure, on October 29th, um, our senior manager at the city of Markham is gonna do a presentation on the challenges of winter maintenance uh, to, for the operations teams and um, trying to maintain minimum standards in our right-of-ways. Um, gonna discuss uh, issues that are, are seen and how we manage to mitigate or, or resolve them. Um, for winter maintenance. Um, so come on out to that one. That should be interesting as well. Uh, you can register at rightawaymanagement.ca for all of these. And um, if you ever have a suggestion for a future one or you need, you want to uh, 
learn about something, please reach out to us and uh, we'll try to um, come up with something to help you out with learning on, on what you need. Uh, so getting involved, if you would like to get involved, um, volunteers are always wanted um, and you can contact either of us. Um, or you can uh, contact uh, info at rightofwaymanagement.ca and we'll set you in the right direction to uh, help out and get involved in, and uh, be part of the um, progress in, in the right of ways. Yeah, if you saw anything today that, that piqued your interest in terms of any of the subcommittees or the conference, um, we're hoping that next year we'll be back uh, in an in-person uh, situation, but obviously we don't know with the COVID situation, um, but we will be progressing as a committee and with our subcommittees. Um, if you've got any special interest in any of those groups um, or just want to join the committee generally, we'd love to hear from you. So now we're going to open the floor. Uh, we did have question and answers on um, going on while we were presenting, so we can um, answer some of those. But if you have any questions on that, um, Steve, can they unmute their mics and ask? Or we prefer that you just um, do the Q and A, and I will. I'm looking at them, and I I will read them to uh, you, Tracy and Barry, for um, your input on some of these questions. Okay, so we have received a, a, a couple. Um, first one, what are some strategies employed for converting existing right-of-way layouts to standard or slash preferred right-of-way layouts, particularly with respect to the utility placement? Okay, um, I'll take this one, uh, Barry. Uh, in the city of Markham, we have um, common cross sections now. We didn't used to, uh, but we have come up with common cross sections. So moving forward, the uh, developers and and uh, development will um, uh, follow the common cross sections. And for us, um, when we're doing reviews and approvals for utilities. We will look at those common cross sections and uh, ask the utilities to follow them. So if someone proposes that one and it's not in the uh, utility common cross section that we have, um, and we have say 1.5 for hydro in that uh, common cross section, then we would ask hydro to go at the 1.5 instead of what they propose. Uh, for the old cross sections, um, it's a little bit of a, a, a matchup. Uh, we allow them to go um, at the minimum clearances from other utilities, uh, but we don't give them more. So we ask them to place at say one meter to allow them to directional board, but we wouldn't let them place at 1.2 or 1.5 we would push them back to that one meter so that we can keep that other space open for other um, utilities. Uh, if you need more, if you have a follow-up question or, or um, and, and want more information, uh, just type it in and we'll an answer again. Thanks, Tracy. Um, and I might just add one other thing to that uh, question is one of the big things that to really help a strategy to do proper subsurface utility engineering investigations so you really know where the existing is in the first place. Because where it is might be problematic to implementing the preferred or the standard location. So it's really having a good understanding of where the existing infrastructure is originally in your project area. And once you have that, then moving it where necessary if you're doing a road widening projects for instance when you do have to relocate okay relocate to the preferred alignment if it's available um, so that's another strategy as well uh, we have another question here is one of the best practices for old right-of-way managers municipalities town cities 
it, to establish a formal sign-off process with utility owners through the MC process or some other structure similar to the City of Toronto. Um, this is a, a good question and it, it does vary between municipality to municipality. Um, some municipalities will not um, allow anybody to go unless they have a sign off from all the utilities. Um, other municipalities uh, don't require the sign off from all of the utilities. And it comes down to uh, what your municipality's risks are and what you're looking at. Um, I know for the city of Markham, we do have a circulation package that we get back from the utilities um, where they, other utilities have signed saying there's conflict or no conflict. Um, but uh, once someone has fixed a conflict, we don't require them to recirculate unless they have shifted towards somebody else's infrastructure. So if they're uh, beyond one meter of someone else's infrastructure, then we don't require recirculation of that, that sign off. Um, but if they're within that one meter, then we will ask for a, a sign off from that utility, which they moved closer to. Um, so it does vary. Um, and it really it becomes a, a municipal uh, preference uh, and what type of, of things. The other thing to think of when you're doing that process is there is going to be locates in the field. Um, so the sign off process, I mean, is only as good as your records uh, that you get. Um, the locates in the field ultimately are going to be your, your final. Um, and again, that will vary um, how people deal with that. At the city of Markham, we do have a utility inspector who goes out onto site for anything that is um, uh, larger than a pit. And uh, he verifies the, the running line and the locate still match what we approved. And then we'll do some, some red line changes on site and sign off uh, if need be. And then um, as built need to be sent in. Um, I hope I answered your question. Um, yeah, I, those were the two questions that came through as of now. I don't see any further ones, but also to, just to go a little further, to expand a little more with what Tracy was saying, here at the region of York, and uh, we do not follow a, a sign off where you, don't, where you need all the utilities to sign off. And it's, once again, it's a preference. And uh, we believe that, well, we understand that what they're basing, the util other utilities are basing off record drawings only, which are based off past record keepings are not reliable. Uh, so we move towards a, that's where I, why I mentioned uh, going a, a subsurface utility engineering investigation to is we put it on the onus of the utility or anyone else putting infrastructure in is to it's their project supply us the best information on the existing situation so we can make the proper decision so we can put it in the proper corridor and and we do have standard corridors similar to the uh, city of mark so once again it's a, it's a preference of how you want to manage uh, that risk uh, at your uh, particular municipality. So there, a best practice, it, it all depends on your, uh, how much risk your utility or your uh, municipality is uh, willing to take on. Yeah, we like to get sign off as well, Steve, um, from everybody and a, a kind of a link to the two questions, if you like, um, and, and your point about um, Sioux investigation. A good coordination during design is, is great because by the time uh, you get then to your municipal consent or your PUCC. Um, everybody, uh, certainly everybody involved in the design is familiar with, with what's happening and it makes the, uh, the PUCC or MC process uh, flow much better. Um, you may have some minor tweaks, but generally speaking, it makes 
uh, things slowed better. And I guess, again, that goes back to our main team here um, with the right-of-way management is uh, good coordination and communication and, uh, and people kind of working together uh, to make things work in a timely fashion. Okay, uh, Steve, we do have a few more questions. Um, is right away management looking into ways of improving utility locates to eradicate project delays? So I know that uh, Ontario One Call has been doing a lot of work on um, late locates, and uh, I can't speak to everything they've done. I just know that they have been, and I know that they've been um, rolling out some stuff. So you might want to look uh, uh, into what Ontario One Call has been doing. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have that information, uh, but Barry, Steve, do you have any at all? Uh, you look for utility locates. We're actually looking towards uh, getting a dedicated locator for uh, spe uh, special projects. Um, so that would basically have a, a one, you, dedicated locator to do the private locate, the utility locates for you within your project limits. So that's one strategy. We're looking to it. The region hasn't done it in the past, but we are looking to, uh, to utilizing that uh, possibility on two of our projects. Okay. Uh, next question. What is City of Markham doing to standardize permanent restoration of road surfaces after many different utilities are given permit, permits to do all kinds of work. Currently, those utilities are allowed to do their own road restoration. So the city of Markham does have a standard for road restoration that is supposed to be followed. And uh, we do um, do site inspections afterwards. Okay, Tracy, I got, and I apologize, I forgot to scroll down on the Q&A. <laughs> Uh, technically, technically challenged here. Um, here's another question for a right away example. If, say, a telecom is currently within the boulevard and the new cross section has an MUP place on the boulevard, do you want to relocate the whole telecom alignment or to the proper location behind the MUP or minimize relocation? I can probably step into that. Um, since I deal with a lot of the uh, um, road or utility coordination on major capital projects here at the region of York. Um, we minimize relocations wherever possible. So we don't move things just to put things in the right corridor. If it's in conflict with the project, we will move it. So in this example, if it's underneath at the telecom, it's currently underneath a, a, a multi-use path and there is no physical con vertical conflict between so that we could build it we would not move it now if that telecom had a above ground feature like a uh, grade level box or a pedestal that was in that alignment yes we would move it because we would have a direct conflict but we as a uh, best practice of your region we minimize the amount of relocation. Uh, that, in the, at, the reason being is to minimize costs and to lessen the, uh, the timelines to do uh, utility relocations to, and its impacts on this whole project schedule. Yeah, uh, we, we basically mimic the same thing, Steve, um, at the city. Uh, if uh, it's not going to impact uh, that um, multi-use pathway, um, then we won't uh, have it re realigned. Um, if it's going to impact it for above ground or at grade um, infrastructure like pedestals or vaults, we may have those re reshifted. Uh, and then the other thing we do is try to keep things uh, 0.6 away from the edge to avoid trip hazards um, of the multi-use pathway um, based off the uh, minimum maintenance standards. Okay, here we have one is uh, just curious about whether a lot of consultants in the DTA know about this right-of-way management because municipalities still tend to have to 
educate many of them about the need to know about Sioux investigations and location of their proposed infrastructure in the right of way. Uh, well, we're trying to spread the word and get the word out. Um, the conferences in the past have had 200 plus uh, attendees and a lot of those are consultants and um, utilities. Uh, so I'm hoping that the word's getting out, um, but the more people that spread the word, the better. And um, the more we are all working together and um, helping uh, mitigate uh, issues and problems. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah. And at York Region, we are also looking to identify where there's gaps in our utility coordination processes. And knowledge is knowledge gap seems to be uh, one of them that's identified. And so we're looking to potentially go to uh, training videos to uh, our training uh, sessions and webinars to as a training tool for utility coordination on our major capital projects. So yes, we believe there is a gap. We want to close that gap. So through, as Tracy mentioned, the these webinars and conferences in the past. Here's a really good one, and it's a it's a tough one to even. Uh, well, I'll read it out. How do you handle abandoned or unused utility facilities? This one is a, a challenge. I think that all all municipalities uh, deal with. Um, currently, with the city of Markham, uh, when something's being abandoned, we'll look at what it is and where it is, and then decide what needs to be done with it. If it's a manhole, we might ask them to remove it. If it's uh, you know a small um, conduit, we might allow them to leave it in place. Um, it really depends case by case what it is and where it is. If it's in an area that's really congested or if it's in an area that would be easy to access or hard to access, um, they may have to uh, fill it um, and make it safe. Um, so there's a variety of ways we deal with them um, with abandoned facilities. Uh, to, there's even times where abandoned facilities have been used so I know that there's times where abandoned water main has been used for installation of um, telecom um, infrastructure uh, because it can't be used for water main any longer. However, it can be used as a uh, viaduct for um, inf other infrastructure. So there's no one answer for that in our end. Um, Steve, Barry, do you want to have? Yeah, it depends. Um, obviously, uh, cost can be, a, can be a factor as well. If it's a long pipeline or something and it's uh, not in the way, um, they tend to, to, like you say, make it safe or fill it. Um, but yeah, if you can, if it's, if it's something smaller and more manageable, absolutely, if you can take it out. I mean, the ideal would be to take everything out, but it's not practical um, or cost effective. Um, because obviously having stuff in there too down the line can cause can cause some confusion, right? Um, but it's to your point, uh, Tracy. It's it really depends on the on the uh, the scale, I think, and and the issues that it may it may present. So, Steve. Okay. Uh, yeah, and and just to to uh, close out this this discussion on this uh, abandonment. There is a, a now a CSA S250, which is on uh, how to map um, um, underground mapping or, or building as, con as constructed drawings. So that, that, that's a tool that we can, as municipalities, start using to um, enforce that proper as drawings are created at the various quality levels. So you have greater certainty of this new infrastructure or abandoned stuff, that is no, that where you're working. We're not saying dig up everything, but as you proceed into the future, that it is um, the as built were cr created to a, a certain quality level to give everyone better certainty of where the stuff is in the future. Okay. okay. It's, oh, you, Tracy? Sorry, Steve. I'm I'm okay to to finish answering the last few questions. 
Um, but uh, do you can you take the next one? This one is how do you balance your preference not to relocate and a utility owners wanting to relocate since they do not want to be under a travel portion of road surface or under the MUP sidewalk due to the road permits and or restoration requirements if Sorry. the owner is doing maintenance? Well, yeah, very good question. Um, here at York Region, um, well, number one, we avoid going under a road. So if you're under a road, for the most part, we will ask you to move it if you're particularly telecommunications because the chance of you going back to dig up for services and, and maintenance is higher. Um, gas, for smaller gas pipelines, we tend to move as well. We don't want them under the road. They don't want to be under the road. Um, but when you get into the bigger infrastructure, that's where you got to ask the question of, well, can we live it live with it there due to the costs and the timing to move something of that of a large, uh, say a large uh, high pressure gas main? Where in the past we've looked at it, done proper sewer investigations to find out exactly where it is, and with the, working with the utility company, come to an agreement that yes, both parties can live with it in this location. Um, under MUPs and sidewalks, well, that's the standard location in York Region. Generally, that's where telecoms are going to end up. And they have to, we basically have the, uh, through our, the various uh, acts and agreements, have the final say on where things go in our right of way. Uh, we try to, our aim is to follow our standards. And if it ends up under a sidewalk and it's not an, uh, a physical conflict, vertical conflict, then that's where they go. Um, so that's how we manage that at the, at the region. And yes, we've had many back and forth as they want to go somewhere else because it's easier. But because it's easier, doesn't make good for right away management for the future. Okay, is there a next question? I hope I answered that one. And Tracy or Barry, did you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, Steve, you no, that, skipped that was... one though. Uh, can you talk about the use of CSA 250 on permits? On permits, uh, well, first of all, what York Region has begun, and it's, uh, it's gonna take a while to do this, uh, to get it implemented and then have the proper enforcement out in the field to ensure it's happening is that we went into our agreements and any new municipal access agreements we have, we, we specify that a certain quality level, depending on the installation methodology, has to be met uh, on the as-built drawings. So if you open cut, we ask for a, I believe it's a level two, um, which is an accuracy within plus or minus 100 millimeters or four inches for those of you in the States, if you're listening, um, as opposed to if you're doing a directional drill, we would look for a level three uh, quality level of your as build, which gives you a little more variance of plus or minus 300 or one foot. So that's our first step. The next step is enforcing it, make sure it's meeting that uh, CSA standard for that type of installation. So we've been using the different quality levels. We started off with our access agreements, and then once it's there, then we move forward to the next step. So it's a multi-step process. Okay, and uh, we need to wrap up. Uh, yes. The very last question um, that I see here is, is there a guideline for 5G that may impact the right away? Um, the uh, 5G presentation will likely cover that and you'll probably get your answer there. I know there is some um, and that'll be there. Uh, there's another one uh, for City Trees, but we're going to have to answer that offline. Um, if you stick around for that uh, later, um, we will answer a couple after. However, we do have a poll that we're going to bring up for everybody yes. to participate in uh, now. Go ahead. 